Um, okay, mics are on. Okay, I'm going to call to order um, a public hearing at the Planning and Economic Development Committee on Tuesday, March 19th, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the Aldermanic Chamber. Um, and I will call the roll. Um, Alderman Schmidt is unable to make it this evening due to a conflict. Um, Alderman Jetty? Here. Alderman Tenza? Present. Alderman Laws? Here. And Alderwoman Melissa Golia, I am present. We also have with us um, Director Marchant. And um, our public evening, our public meeting this evening is regarding Ordinance 19038, amending the sign ordinance relative to address numbers of ground signs. And um, Director Marchant, if you would like to join us just to give a overview. Good evening. Good evening and Sarah welcome. Marshawn, thank you. Um, I'm here tonight to just quickly address the public hearing for 019-038. Um, the planning department has received numerous, numerous complaints about the fact that there are ground signs without numbers on them indicating an address for a plaza. And even in this day of GPS and ways, and um, there are many people who drive down specifically DW Highway and Amherst Street and really wish there was a number on the sign indicating where on those long crowded streets they are. So the intent of this ordinance was to add in a requirement for numbers, street address numbers on ground signs. Um, and that's the gist of the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Okay, and this um, went to planning board on March 7th, on March I believe 7th, it. And it was, was recommended for approval. For approval, right, and just, um, in reading their minutes, um, there was a question about would it be just one number for a plaza or a series of numbers? And my understanding and the explanation provided that evening was if there are five different numbers within that large plaza, it would say like 21 through 29 or whatever on the ground sign, not just 21. Correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So, I will now ask for a testimony in favor. Seeing none, testimony in opposition. None. Um, again, testimony in favor. And a final time testimony in opposition. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing at, um, okay, Mike, someone went at 7.06. And I will call to order a meeting of the Planning and Economic Development Committee in the chamber at 7.07 .07 p.m. Um, and once again, Alderman Schmidt is unable to join us due to a commitment. Um, Alderman Jetty? Here. Alderman Tenza? Present. Alderman Laws? Here. And Alderwoman Melissa Golia, I am present. And also with us, we have Director Marchant. Um, do I have any public comment? Um, none. Communications, we have none. Um, this evening, I've invited Paul Shea, the executive director from GAD, to join us to um, have a follow-up conversation regarding the presentation um, all of us just saw up in the auditorium at their annual meeting. So, Paul, if you would like to join us um, and take a seat. And while you're getting set up, Paul and I talked and thought this might be um, a most efficient use of time because he usually ends up doing his whole presentation again here on a different evening. So um, hence my request that members try to attend. And I thought we could use this time for questions, comments, thoughts um, around what we saw this evening. So Paul, if you would like to just give us a... 
Yeah, intro? so, so uh, this evening we showed our annual presentation. Um, typically at our annual meeting, we uh, don't focus so much on economic impact numbers, uh, and we bring those numbers to planning and economic development. Uh, but this year we, we kind of hybridized the presentation. Uh, which I think is good uh, because we're also in the midst of a uh, study uh, with Americans for the Arts to determine economic impact across organizations and, and uh, programs throughout the community um, in the area of arts. Um, this uh, presentation will be available on our YouTube page uh, at some point uh, in the next couple of weeks. And we'll also get it loaded up on Facebook um, and send it out through our newsletter um, as well as through a blog on our website. So if folks are looking for that, um, I believe we'll also be arranging for it to be uh, shown on Access Nashua. Um, so uh, we, we covered a lot of ground, uh, but some of the, the highlights are uh, the areas of growth uh, that, that we're looking at for this coming year. Uh, we will be building uh, an additional 12 community garden beds uh, to bring the total number of beds along the Nashua Heritage Rail Trail from 24 to 36, uh, which will... Uh, get us about halfway to meeting uh, the demand that we've seen this year in applications. Uh, we received a total of 52 applications, um, and, and so we're working to uh, meet that need in the neighborhood. Um, we are also uh, going to be building a new website uh, at experiencenashuaarts.org um, in partnership with the Nashua Arts uh, Commission and City Arts Nashua, uh, the company uh, Clever Light Media, uh, which operates downtown at 30 Temple Street, uh, is working with us on this project. And uh, we, we've undergone a, a marketing analysis uh, with Pearl Marketing um, and, and determined that uh, one of our areas of opportunity is, is really branching out uh, to drive uh, visits from outside of town. Uh, so we, we've done a lot of communication in recent years um, around uh, building uh, positive identity for downtown Nashua. Um, you know, we, we, there was a great identity for downtown uh, to, to kind of begin with, but we've really uh, worked in earnest to kind of bolster up uh, the way that people feel uh, about the community because there, there's a lot to be thankful uh, about and a lot to be proud of, um, and, and so we work to communicate that. Um, and so kind of the, the next phase of, of our marketing efforts is going to really revolve around driving visits. Um, and so this experiencenashuaarts.org website will, will serve as a, it'll be a microsite within our site, um, and it will serve as a, a landing page for people who are uh, looking for things to do and see who may not be familiar with Nashua. Um, but the design will have a good bit of crosstalk with, with our existing assets on the site um, to uh, increase awareness of, of our small business community, uh, the programs that we run, um, as well as our central community calendar, uh, which lives at downtownnashua.org slash events, uh, which we've put a good bit of effort into, and, and uh, folks can submit their own content uh, to that calendar. Um, so it's, it's a great resource. Uh, we see about 1,500 visits to that website uh, or that page on the website um, each month. Um, I, I think that's really the, the, the highlights um, of, of the presentation. Uh, we've, we've really uh, worked to grow our programs. Uh, when, it, when I started with Great American Downtown um, in 2015, uh, we were known for uh, the winter holiday stroll, uh, the taste of downtown, the Nashua Farmers Market and Restaurant Week. Since that time, uh, with with support from the city and support from uh, the community, uh, bo both in business sponsorships and small donations uh, and uh, charitable gaming, uh, we've worked to grow our programs. We've added uh, three music festivals. Uh, the Farmers Market uh, has been essentially rebuilt from the ground up uh, to grow from uh, six to eight vendors to over 40 vendors now on a closed section of Main Street. Uh, we have absorbed the Gate City Community Gardens program um, and, and uh, established the Nashua Street Pianos program, the Chocolate Stroll, the Downtown Scarecrows program, Downtown Cleanup Days. Um, all of these things are, are new for us, and so we're, we're really um, uh, working as, as we move forward to establish the success of those programs um, tweak them uh, based on what we've learned from year to year 
um, as, as we've built them up. A lot of these are in their second or third year. Um, some of our music festivals are in their fourth year. And, and so uh, the focus this year is, is really on uh, catching our stride. We, we've we've uh, accelerated a good bit. Um, and now the name of the game is really honing in, improving the quality of the events, as well as uh, attracting people from outside of town who may not be aware of them to join us. Great. Um, anyone have questions or comments? I know um, people were upstairs. Yeah, Alderman well, Tenza. Thank you, and I, I apologize. I wasn't able to make the uh, the meeting at 6 o'clock, but um, thank you, Paul, for, for everything you're doing. Um, all I hear is positive feedback about the um, uh, farmers markets, the music festivals. Um, I still would love to get a music festival um, over at the uh, over at Holman Stadium uh, and, and move it out of downtown, but still uh, incorporate uh, downtown into it. I think the uh, music scene around here is um, probably bigger than people know and can be can be um, exploited a little bit more. So, uh, thanks for all you're doing to to help that out and to bring more people into downtown. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Alderman Jetty. Um, I was upstairs, and I did kind of ask the same question up there, but since we have a different right. audience here, um, I, I would, uh, as I said upstairs, I compliment you and your organization and everything you're doing, Paul, and I think it's been a, a great benefit to the city, but as I said upstairs, I would like to encourage the the downtown merchants to uh, you know look at the investment that we're making in downtown in these activities. And I, I um, you know, I I, I see um, when I go to these events, I see a lot of the shops are closed, and uh, I would you know I, I know people have. Uh, families and um, they have other priorities but when you're in the retail business uh, I'm not a retailer so I probably don't know what I'm talking about but I've heard other people express the same thing they wonder why these shops downtown on Main Street are open on nine o'clock in the morning on a on a Monday or a weekday and uh, close at five when um, when most of the people are available you know, after those times, you know, they're available in the early evenings, they're available on weekends, and, um, you know, a lot of the shops are, are uh, closed and um, not, uh, don't seem to be taking advantage of the, of the great work that uh, Great American Downtown and the Downtown Improvement Committee and the city as a whole are doing to, uh, to uh, improve the downtown. Thank you for your question. The uh, w w One of the biggest uh, areas of focus that we have in our events, of course, we, we work to produce quality events that people are attracted to and come out to enjoy, uh, but, but we're also uh, very mindful of the collateral economic impact, as, as I would term it, um, of these events. Uh, so walk-off traffic, um, incidental uh, visits from someone who's strolling uh, from the event to the parking garage um, or is is you know just not that interested in that one band so maybe they'll circulate and uh, and check things out and um, there there's I guess two sides of or, or two uh, facets with which to look at this and one would be uh, Sunday events so our, our farmers market operates on Sundays uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we'll be opening up on June 16th this year and we'll run through uh, mid-October. Uh, the the uh, culture of the small business community uh, for, for a long time um, has, uh, one of the components has been that, that businesses are largely closed on Sunday. Uh, it's been a day for worship, a day for family, and um, for, for some businesses, uh, the, the value proposition, uh, whether it, it changes or not, uh, that, that may not change whether or not they may like to be open on a Sunday, and, and, um, and, and we do get that. Um, but at the, at the same time, there's a number of businesses, uh, there's a number of, of newer businesses uh, that, that haven't really been a part of, of that culture um, and are, are uh, coming into the small business community 
and they seem to have been a bit more open to uh, giving Sundays a try. Um, I, I do think that as uh, the farmer's market reputation uh, continues to grow as a destination, both on the consumer side, uh, but also as a, a, a point of attraction um, in the eyes of our small business community, that, that we will see more businesses that uh, give some consideration to opening up on Sunday. Um, we've already seen uh, some great success, and, and I've, I've touched on that upstairs uh, at the annual presentation uh, Judge Bells is perhaps the, the biggest standout of an example um, where uh, that business uh, actually does more, um, uh, has more activity on the register by the hour um, during the farmer's market than they do at the Holiday Stroll, which is an event that attracts uh, 35,000 to 40,000 people uh, to our downtown. So I, I was really astonished by that, uh, that, that fact and uh, how it's impacted her business. Uh, we've also seen um, Camaraderie, uh, which is a, a newer uh, ladies' clothing shop um, next to uh, Martha's Exchange. Um, not every Sunday, but some Sundays they have uh, had had staff come down um, over the course of the season and um, and set up, um, you know, open their doors and and uh, welcome uh, folks that are either there for church or the farmers market. Um, you know, we have uh, thousands of people that come down to worship every Sunday at the, the various churches um, throughout Main Street. So between um, between uh, coming for for prayer and and uh, and coming to the farmers market, uh, we have we have many many people. And so I, I think over time uh, we'll see uh, that that reality um, be considered. Um, it, last year was a big test. We weren't really sure how. Um, it would uh, work out, and it worked out very, very well. Um, I, I, th I think folks were pleased all around, and um, that has uh, that reputation for the market uh, has, has translated to additional vendors reaching out to us um, that, that we've been trying to attract for years. And um, I, I think similarly with, with our small business community, as that word gets around, um, the, the consideration of hiring someone to come in to man the shop before you know, four or six hours on Sunday, uh, the, the value proposition may be there. And, and for the folks that, um, you know, whether they're hiring someone or, or coming in themselves uh, to make that one of their days of the week, I think we'll see more and more of that as time goes on. Um, and and so um, it, it's, a, it's a work in progress. Um, on, on the Saturday event side of things, uh, we have kind of evaluated our, our music festival events and uh, determined that the duration of the events, uh, when, when you consider how long folks are staying, um, was a bit long. And um, these events have been running from noon to 10 p.m. And the average uh, stay time uh, for a visitor is about three to four hours. And so when you have, say, uh, 1,200, 1,500 people visiting, over this period of time, and they're only there for four hours, and the event is 10 hours long, you end up getting a, an average uh, attendance of maybe 400 people uh, of, of the 1,500 at, at any given moment. Um, and so one of the changes that we've made coming into 2019 is, is we've reduced the duration of the event, uh, the, the, two, the two big events, which would be the, um, the New Muse and the uh, New England Roots Festival. Uh, for these events, uh, they'll run from 1 to 7 p.m. Uh, we believe with that, um, even if we attract the same number of people, um, the crowd feel uh, will be more robust. Uh, of course, part of, part of these experiences is the people that you're with. Um, and, and if there are uh, a, a really rich crowd, um, it enhances the experience. And, and so we think that that will improve uh, the events for attendees. Uh, but we also think that it will improve the events for um, our uh, retail and, and restaurant businesses in that uh, many of our retail locations do close at, at say, 6 o'clock um, on the weekends and uh, on Saturdays. And, and so with this event uh, or the, this pair of events, especially running um, up to 7 p.m. Um, and with the main act um, running from 6 to 7 p.m., uh, we, we think that that will result in a bigger concentration on the crowd side, uh, but also uh, more opportunities for people to uh, have a, a, a 
run in with our, our small business owners and um, check out what they have to offer as they stroll about downtown. Um, I touched on this upstairs. It's, it really comes down to the individual preference of the business owners, but we do um, work on our end to encourage folks to open. Um, we also work to design and, and improve the events as time goes on uh, to, to enhance that impact and, and uh, make sure that the value is there so that, um, you know, on the event experience side for our attendees, um, these these kind of exploring these shops that you don't see and talking with with small business owners, it's it's um, it enhances the event experience too. And and so we are we are working towards that. Uh, we think we think it will take time, and and some folks may never be interested, and and that's okay. Um, but um, uh, we'll keep working on it. Thank you. I I just want to comment. I know um, I've heard some of the same comments you've heard. Alderman Jetty, but I do agree, especially as it relates to the farmer's market. I think this year everyone was kind of like, well, let's see how this evolves. And <clears throat> with you having um, additional vendors who are new, um, with that will come people who follow them. And so um, that's going to provide a new opportunity for people to um, discover some of the shopping and dining experiences we have on Main Street. So hopefully as people see the impact, um, it will kind of flow down Main Street and we'll see more shops open. Um, I'm also hoping that once the new signs get up, it will also make it um, easier and make people feel more comfortable. I know last year at the market, um, probably the end of August, one of your vendors said to me, oh, someone told me um, they really liked it better on the bridge because there's no way or to park here. And I said to this person, well, you just come and you put your truck here, but half a block that way and half a block that way, there's lots of parking. And he's like, oh, I didn't realize that. And so I think once we get the signage, that's also going to help all of the events we have downtown in addition to just um, the ease of navigating downtown in general. So um, any other questions, comments, thoughts? Um, I, I just um, think it's important for people to hear about how you're interacting with the arts community and um, again, what you're doing and your part in that. So um, I know you're helping design the new website and getting it up and running and all of that is going to be dovetailing together. Um, and you talked about um, upstairs, um, the American for the Arts survey, which I know you're helping with and coordinating. Can you just touch upon that a bit because Again, I think it relates to that how arts and community piece that we're looking at in terms of economic development. Yeah, so so the arts, um, we, we can celebrate for their intrinsic value, for the way that they make us feel and, and the way that we, uh, you know, the way that they enhance how we relate to one another and ourselves, but there's also the economic component. And as, uh, as things carry on and... and uh, um, and we work to demonstrate our value and, and uh, as various other arts organizations uh, work to demonstrate their value in the community. Um, th this economic component is, is important. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very important consideration, especially when it comes to uh, when we're talking about whether or not to in, invest in the arts. Um, and uh, it, it ties into to what is the return on that investment. Um, each, um, every five years, uh, an organization called American for the Americans for the Arts um, conducts a nationwide uh, study, um, and and, uh, and and so I know you know all about this, but this is for the folks right. at home, the um, uh, every five years, Americans for the Arts uh, conducts this study in partnership with various communities um, throughout the country, and in New Hampshire, uh, there are a number of communities concord. Uh, Manchester, uh, the um, uh, Mananoc uh, region, 
uh, uh, Portsmouth, if I recall, um, participate in this this study, and um, they uh, set out to collect what they call intercepts, uh, which is a fancy word for survey. It's a one-page survey uh, for event attendees. So up at the Cap, uh, the Capital Center for the Arts in Concord, um, you have volunteers uh, hanging out in the lobby, uh, collecting surveys that say, um, uh, you know, w w how far did you come from? Uh, what's your household income? Uh, how much do you think you spent tonight on uh, this, that, and the next thing, in including your ticket? And um, then they they take all those numbers and um, they they crunch them and uh, come up with a regional estimate on economic impact a across organizations and venues and um, and programs. And uh, Nashua has not. Uh, previously participated in this study. So uh, many of the communities have, have been doing it every five years when, when Americans for the Arts come around. Um, and uh, Nashua has been really thinking um, in, in great depth on this question um, of um, what does it mean for the economy? And I, I think a good bit of that, you know, it's, it's always been a consideration and, and a thing that we talk about, but, but I do think that with the Performing Arts Center coming online and, and considering such a, a significant investment, um, the real questions about the return um, are important to ask. And so what we've set out to do, uh, and we've been working on this for perhaps nine, 10 months now, um, is uh, partner with, with various organizations. Of course, we are not lead on this project. We, we are just a partner too. Uh, but the Nashua Arts Commission, uh, City Arts Nashua, um, various uh, performing arts organizations in the city um, have all been engaged in this study. Um, and so we've been going out to various events. Uh, volunteers and staff um, hang out, set up a table, and, and collect these surveys. Um, and uh, we'll be coming into the home stretch of that uh, perhaps in the next two to three months. Um, and we'll have a, a year of data across programs. Uh, we, we've done uh, intercepts for most every program that we have that involves any arts component. Um, and we'll have this data uh, with, uh, you know, uh, professional analysis on uh, economic impact. And so we, as Great American Downtown, can point to our programs and say, um, uh, you know, we touched on upstairs that, that we've done our own study and we've worked with, with some uh, uh, data analytics professionals to uh, determine economic impact for the holiday stroll specifically. Um, and we can say with a 95% uh, confidence that the economic impact of the holiday stroll is somewhere between $680,000 and $932,000. Um, the uh, Americans for the Arts are going to give us a real deep dive into the numbers um, and they're going to give us a solid baseline as well. Uh, for the economic impact of arts organizations and programs prior to the establishment of the Performing Arts Center, which I think is uh, really uh, a, a good move. It, it gives us this data set to think about. Um, we can look at the national numbers and, and we can justify our investment as a community in various things, uh, but to really have that, that local data where we can say with, with even more confidence, this is the impact um, I, I think will be useful. And also, um, as we get out uh, several years from now um, and, and the Performing Arts Center is established, uh, we'll be able to determine the increment. So um, say the arts have an impact, in, and these numbers, I'm just throwing them out there, they're made up. Say the economic impact of the arts in the city of Nashua is $8 million and the Performing Arts Center comes in. And in the next study cycle, uh, it, it comes up with uh, a number higher than that. Uh, we will be able to say, okay, so we know uh, what the impact of, of this facility is um, specifically. Um, and, and they'll have data on that when, when they do the intercepts at the facility. Uh, but really to point to that, that baseline of impact and say, you know, this is where we've grown. Um, as a direct result of the investment, um, I think will be really good in the long term for, for uh, justifying the project. Great. Thank you. Um, any other questions, comments, thoughts? Anything? Yes. 
Please feel feel free to come to the mic. Quick, quick comment on this thought. Uh, and if you would just say your name for an ad. My name is Peter Schaefer. I live at 15 E Street. And I walk to downtown a lot from around there. It's about a mile away. But in the wintertime, I don't walk it that much. And I was just thinking about something when you were talking about the hours, store hours and whatnot. And, uh, and I don't know what the city is doing downtown specifically, but the concept of having sort of summer hours versus, versus winter hours might somehow help because you know we draw yeah you know we draw a lot of people downtown at night uh, throughout the whole week I think you know because of the restaurants and if if some of the stores would be open at the same time that might make it things a little more lively and it might be sustainable I don't really know but it seems to me that you know when you go downtown sometimes you go to restaurants in the evening but there's really not much else going on and that you know in the wintertime it's not going to work I'm pretty sure because I don't do that in the wintertime but in the summertime people are out they want to walk around as well they eat they'll eat and stuff so maybe they could just try like one summer or something if it doesn't work it doesn't work it might be worth their while thanks yeah thank you thank you yes Alderman Laws I mentioned this upstairs uh, after Alderman Jetty expresses concerns about the, the hours of local downtown businesses and uh, on downtown. Excuse me, may I interrupt you? You also serve, just for people who don't know, you also serve on the Downtown Improvements That's Committee. The next thing that's coming oh, out of my okay. mouth. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate being announced like that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm on the Downtown Improvements Committee, and that's a conversation that has been active and ongoing. Um, and as Paul said, it's really up to the individual business owner. But uh, at the very least, since we wouldn't even dare to mandate that people open their businesses at specific hours, at the very least, we're hoping that the uh, improved farmer's market, by the way, excellent job, uh, and the arrival of the Performing Arts Center w will inspire people to stay open later. And for the record, when the conversation came up, and I don't want to mis misrepresent anybody who's on the committee, but it, it seemed to be well received. People were kind of like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. We should be open when this thing's going on. So I, I, I'm hoping that the culture changes, starts at least gradually changing this summer. Well, and, and to that, I, I think that this summer, um, as well as with the farmer's market, as well as um, other times at night during the summer, you see people strolling Main Street just window shopping. And so you think, hmm, if the stores were open, would they go in? So, um, and, and it's a mindset and a culture set. And, and it's a, a change and it's an economic risk for some of the businesses, I think, because of how they're staffed. Yes, Alderman Lost. Thank you. Uh, at the risk of, of uh, cross-pollinating committees here, one of the other, I mean, there's a lot that we're focusing on right now on how to get more business downtown and in downtown improvements committee. One of the other things is is lightening the street. I believe you've been part of some of those conversations, yes. um, which I also feel will, I mean, because when it gets dark downtown, it's dark downtown. Right. And uh, it'll be nice to have some artificial lights to keep it a little bit brighter. I think that'll inspire more people to, to walk around and to shop and hopefully just keep their businesses open longer. Yeah. Also, big shout out to Crosby's Bakery for <laughs> keeping it in the family. I'm glad that that place is staying open. Yes. Well, they're taking credit cards now, too. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Welcome to 2019. Yes, yes. Any other comments, thoughts? Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, thank you for all your efforts. They are appreciated. Um, and. And I just, it's a summary of what went on. We keep referring to upstairs, your report to your, at your annual meeting. And as you said, it's available on your website. But I think that in addition to the events and activities um, that you bring to downtown, the volunteers that you bring to downtown to work on the cleanup um, activities and even your volunteers for the market and the stroll, um, I know all of those people do not come from downtown and all of them do not come from Nashua. So I think all of those opportunities, again, bring people downtown and um, make them more aware of what we have to offer as a community. And hopefully they will come back here and also visit on their free time.
So if I may make a shameless plug yeah. for our next big thing, the um, April 13th, uh, we've got a downtown parks cleanup day. Uh, we'll be uh, building at, at least a portion of the 12 new community garden beds that day. Um, we, we have uh, about 200, 150 to 200 folks that come out for that each year, um, and we've really been able to branch out. <clears throat> the uh, To your point about uh, th these opportunities, kind of familiarizing people with the downtown, I, I think a lot of our volunteers for the, for the very first time um, at this event uh, get to see the, the Nashua Heritage Rail Trail. Uh, which is a beautiful uh, trail, and there, there's lots of great murals along the trail. It's where the community garden exists. It's going to be expanding uh, thanks to some really great work out of community development. Um, they're they're going to be uh, extending the rail trail across the street and going out towards the Merrimack River. Um, but but to, to get back to the shameless plug, if, if folks would like to join us um, on April 13th, uh, we, we like to say that many hands make light work, um, and so we hope that you will. Uh, we have a page up on Facebook. It's an event page at the Great American Downtown Facebook page uh, where you'll find our registration link. Um, and people can also reach me directly at Paul W. Shea, that's S-H-E-A, at downtownnashua.org. Uh, we have a number of different uh, uh, businesses, um, uh, BAE, um, Riviere University, uh, Comcast, uh, some years, depending on the, the overlap with their, their day of caring, um, uh, organize a good group, uh, farm product and development is another one. And, and so they come out with maybe 10, 20 folks from the business and, uh, they, they have a team, uh, but, but I'd be open to, uh, kind of coordinating in advance on a, a team project, um, if any area businesses are interested in getting involved and, um, and uh, we're, we're really looking forward to it. it. It gives us an opportunity to, to start out uh, the warmer months on the right foot with, with some really nice and clean parks and uh, gives the Park and Recreation Department a good baseline uh, to, to start from and uh, start fresh in the spring. All that winter detritus builds up and uh, presents itself as the snow melts. And um, so it's, it's very meaningful, and, and we appreciate people joining us for that. Well, I'm going to give you another plug, your downtowner newsletter. I was impressed to see that it's gone up 12% in terms of people um, receiving that. And I would just suggest to anyone who wants to subscribe that they go to your website and do that so they're aware of what's going on. And I also noticed that you're hiring this summer for some positions, and I assume there's more information on your website. Around yeah, so, so they'll they'll be posted on um, uh, they'll be posted on our website right now. Uh, as, as we touched on, I don't, I don't think we've really gotten into it down here. We're in, we're in the midst of an overhaul on our website, and uh, so it's it's downloaded to a development server. Um, and the short of it is, we can't put any new content up, or it will be wiped uh, when the the new site comes online. But um, in in the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, we will have the jobs posted. Um, one of them will be for a, a administrative position, um, and, and we'll be hiring at least one person uh, for the farmer's market this summer. Okay, great. Just so people can look for those if they're looking for local employment. Thank you. You're welcome, because you are walking distance, so that's nice. Yeah. All right, thank you. If there are no other comments or questions... See you at the farmer's market. Thank you so much. See and, you at the cleanup day. We, we really couldn't do this without the support of the Board of Aldermen and the City of Nashua. Uh, we, we touched on, we, we've been working to decrease the proportion of, of funding um, as we grow our programs each year, but uh, that support really gives us a, a great baseline uh, w with which to, to catalyze all of this great activity. So so thank you for having me here tonight, but but thank you for the, the enduring support. Um, it, it really takes a lot of people to, to make all this stuff happen. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Great. Okay. Unfinished business. We have none. New business resolutions. We have none. New business ordinances. We have 19 038 amending the sign ordinance relative to address numbers of ground signs. And it was, um, as we indicated earlier, assigned to the planning board and received a favorable recommendation. 
on March 7th. So um, Director Marchant, if you'd like to join us for the discussion and could I have someone make a recommendation, Alderman Tenza? Uh, I just have to make a motion for final, for uh, final passage. Yes. This, of, uh, R19. 038. 038. 038. Sorry. Okay. And so discussion. Um, would anyone like Director Marchand to give another overview or questions, comments? Alderman Laws. Uh, so the only part, in, and I'm sure there's a great explanation for it, but the fact that it has the number has to be on each face of the sign. And now I'm assuming this is mainly because of the, you know, DW Highway is one way, right, on each side. Yeah. So why, why do you need to have the numbers on the side that's facing the opposite side of the street? Great Director Marchant. Thank you. Um, you can see it from the other side of the street, too. So yeah. if you're driving down either side, no matter which side you're coming from, you can see the address for that plaza, because there's usually one ground sign for an entire plaza. OK. So you'd be able to, they should be large enough that you should be able to see it without taking an unnecessary portion of the sign. Okay, thank you. Alderman Tenza. Um, existing signs won't have to, will they have to go back and put uh, numbers on? These are just for new signs, correct? Correct. Going forward, new signs. Yeah. Question, Alderman Jetty. Um, so I had, um, um, communicated with um, Director Marshawn my concern that uh, that as proposed there's a, a minimum uh, height of four inches in height but there was there's no maximum expressed and um, so my concern is that um, uh, is that someone could uh, could could uh, come up with uh, you know, a, the, you know, these, I, I envision these giant numbers, you know, like I'm thinking of 400, 402 Amherst Street. Yeah. I mean, it's a big, huge sign, and that's all it's got is the numbers mm -hmm. on it. And I'm thinking of somebody saying, you know, there's my, there's my number sign. It's, it's a minimum of four inches. And, um, so here's my, here's my number sign. And, and now in addition to that, I'm entitled to a ground sign or an identification sign. So I'm, I'm afraid that um, an unintended consequence would be somebody could take advantage of this and have, you know, more signage than uh, what is currently allowed. Um, so uh, as a result of my comments, um, uh, an amendment was prepared. I, I, does, does this just go? Does this just come to me, or did any, everyone? No, it's everyone has a copy on their okay. desk. Okay. Yes. Um, so I, I appreciate that. My only concern with the amendment, the proposed amendment, uh, is that it, it now provides for uh, four inches in height and a maximum of eight inches in height, which I like. But then it says a, in total square footage. Not to, uh, not to exceed 10 square feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, 10 square feet sounds like a lot to me, especially when this, the next sentence is address identifier is not considered as part of the total allowable mm -hmm. sign area calculation. So now in addition to the, um, you know, the sign, uh, the maximum sign that we now have, like in the, in uh, in 101, it's 10 feet, I think. Um, now now you now we're going to allow an, an additional 10 square feet, and I just think, you know, I did a, a rough calculation. Um, you know, if you've got numbers that are eight inches high, and um, you know, so you add a few inches on the top and the bottom, and then you know, what's the maximum number we've got in town for an address? You know, f four, do we have four digit numbers somewhere? Yeah. Um, so now you've got, um, you know, I, I can see where, um, you know, if it's eight inches high, four inches wide, 
plus a few a few extra inches, you know, to allow for uh, spacing. Um, I can't imagine that you would need more than uh, a couple of hundred square inches, which would be, um, you know, 288 square inches is two square feet. Mm -hmm. Ten square feet seems mm -hmm. excessive to me. Um, do, you, do you have any thoughts on that? Director Marchant? Yes, certainly. Um, so working with um, zoning on this, they had suggested the 10 square feet um, to allow for the street name as well to be totally included in the address identifier to be written out. And so that would cover our longer street names as well. If that's not something this group is comfortable with, zoning is definitely comfortable with that being less than 10 square feet. Um, but that was the intention was not to limit somebody from writing out Amherst Street, Continental Boulevard <laughs> is a maximum of eight inches. So that's why it is that larger number. But if that is not something you're comfortable with, the thing we are most concerned with or that we hear the most complaints about is the address number not being shown. So if I could follow. Yeah, I, I think having the number is a great idea. I think it's very necessary. And um, you're right when you go down some of these um, streets, it's hard to find what what the address of, of the building is. So requiring this on the sign, um, like I can think of some signs in in Ward 5 where the, uh, the people putting up the sign at the suggestion, I think, of the of the zoning board, if not the planning board, you know, did add numbers. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I'm envisioning, you know, just you know, just the number, you know, 214, mm -hmm. um, to my mind, would be sufficient to identify uh, the address. Um, and, um, you know, ha allowing them to build another 10 foot, 10 square foot sign, you know, with the, you know, like, as you point out, Continental Boulevard, you know, it, it just seems excessive to me. It, just my thought, but I would, um, so I guess I, I would like to, um, uh, well, I don't know if, if we're ready for me to propose an amendment uh, or, or does this uh, need to be um, redone by legal and I know yeah, you, there was some talk about a, a hearing re being required, another right. hearing. Yep. No, great question. So um, if um, to make modifications because they haven't been posted, we will need to have another public hearing either way. It is appropriate to make modifications now so we can post them prior to the public hearing so that we'll be all set with just one more public hearing. So anything that's considered a substantial change needs an additional public hearing. Okay. So... Could, could I follow up? Um, yes, please. Uh, sure. So would you be comfortable with um, the the amendment that legal uh, prepared to the proposed ordinance, uh, which says a minimum of four inches in height and a, a maximum of eight inches in height? Um, if we eliminated the in total square footage not to exceed 10 square feet, or if we said uh, two square feet, wh wh which would you rather, which would you be more comfortable with? Director Marshall. Thank you. I would prefer two square feet. I would prefer not to leave that out. Um, I think that that definition is, is, not, is a good thing to include. Okay. And, and just for clarification, you prefer the smaller size of two square feet I don't see any harm in that, absolutely. Okay. Especially since we're not including it in the overall size of the sign. Okay. So your amendment, Alderman Jetty? So I, I move to amend the uh, proposed ordinance um, in accordance with uh, what we've been handed out here. So it would read, um, So the third line, uh, so paragraph H, 
the third line would be a, a minimum of four inches in height, a maximum of eight inches in height, and total square footage not to exceed two square feet. And for the, 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 uh, the paragraph below uh, 190-102, subparagraph D, um, similarly would, would read um, a minimum of four inches in height, a maximum of eight inches in height, and total square footage not to exceed two square feet. Okay, so you've all heard the amendment, and um, as indicated, and you have the document in front of you on in paragraphs um, 190101 H and 190102 D um, to strike the word 10 and replace it two square feet. All those in favor? Can yeah. I just make a, make a yeah. comment on that? Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, I guess I would be in favor of keeping keeping the uh, proposed ordinance as it is at 10 square feet. If I'm doing my math correctly, if you have eight inch letters that only allows someone to put a sign that is 15 inches across to come up with the two square feet, am, am, I, am I doing that correctly? Say that again. Inches in height. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I'm, maybe I'm thinking of 10 square feet. So it would only, sorry. Alderman Laws. Assuming that there's two inches on the top and the bottom, then you've got a foot tall, right? Mm -hmm. So then you can only have 10 feet laterally to make 10 square feet. Right. So how many eight inch letters, which I assume the width would probably be three inches around there, how many three inch letters can you fit in 10 feet? Four times 10, 40 letters? That doesn't sound like that many letters. I think the ordinance is fine. Alderman Just follow up. It, 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 as I see it, the point of, of this ordinance is for signage is for people who are driving by on major uh, roads to to know which you know what number of the plaza is. The smaller we make the numbers, the tougher it's going to be for them to see the uh, the numbers on these signs. So I would I would prefer to to keep it with the 10 square feet. I don't think that's excessive given the, the signage that's out there and the, and the size of the signs. Alderman Jetty. So I, I'm i thinking, all, you know, when you're on Amherst Street, you don't need a sign that says you're on Amherst Street. You know you're on Amherst Street. You just need the number, and the maximum numbers that we have in town are four digits. So... It could be five. But with with eight inch numbers, Alderman that's still. Tenza. Sorry, I yeah, apologize. Tenza. With eight inch numbers, if you have four, uh, and you want to make them eight inches, that would still be four square feet. That's the problem. Four square feet. Right. So. Uh, I, I, this is why we became lawyers, Alderman. <laughs> we don't do math well. So if Alderman I'm, laws. So 10 square feet. Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Jetty. 10 square feet is 14,400 square inches. Take me on the phone. Yeah. I mean, so, well, we've got to, we, we don't have to rely upon my, my mathematical <laughs> uh, ex, lack of expertise. Uh, Director Marchand, could, could okay, you help Alderman, us? Before um, Alderman Laws had a comment, and then Director Marchand. Um, I have two, if you don't mind, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, first of all, the two words continental and boulevard together are 20 letters by themselves. And if my math's correct, which it probably isn't, uh, we can only fit 40 letters in a row on not counting spaces in 10 square feet if it's 8 inches with 2 inches on top. So, I mean, you've already got half of it done if someone wants to put in the full road name. And so the argument I suppose that you're making is we don't let them put in the full name. So it's either just numbers or we give them enough space to put in the full name. And I think if we're already making them do something 
that they weren't, didn't have to do before, why don't we just give them the option? Director Marshall. Um, so if you had an eight inch high letter, it could be six inches wide, right, is a reasonable width. So if you were looking at that, you would need three feet for five characters, right, or two and a half square feet. Just kind of as rough math, if you look at it as a half an inch, half a foot wide, excuse me, that gives you, that gives you some rough math. I do, um, the other thing I would say is that this is not free, um, is that uh, signs are incredibly expensive. And adding on square footage as a requirement, I don't think is going to encourage people to want to put a whole lot of extra that they didn't really want on their sign on for extra money. I do think there's outliers, and there's always people who challenge any assumption that I attempt to make um, and don't necessarily care maybe about the money. But I do think that the it's important to note that this isn't free, and this could add substantial costs. So I think it is more likely that the majority of people will go for the smaller size letters and less um, numbers and letters in general. Um, I think the other thing that just to point out is in talking um, talking this out is that some people like to, although I wouldn't say it's as useful when you're driving down the street looking at a sign quickly, spell it out, right? 888. You can spell that out. That's why it's alphanumeric as well instead of just numeric. Um, so just keeping those in Great. mind. So I, I understand what you guys are saying, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, just, just think in your minds. Imagine yourself going down Daniel Webster Highway. Think of all of the sign pollution that currently exists there. You know, and it's, it's hard to find places because there's just, there are just so many signs, and allowing people now to. Um, to add um, another 10 square feet, you know, of, uh, of, of signage, uh, you know, to spell out, you know, in, in, in uh, alphabetically, you know, you know, 3500 South Daniel Webster Highway. Um, I, I just, you know, I, I, I I'm thinking that that, that 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 that's not going to look very very good, you know. Requiring just you know numeric numbers, so that people can identify the address, they know where they are on South Daniel Webster Highway. I think that's a good idea. But to allow people to now double the signage that they currently have, um, I, I think it's a step in the wrong direction. I think we've got. Too much signage down there now, um, but that's just my view. Director Marshall, I have a question. Where in the city do we have up to five numbers? Um, I think it would be more of a. It would be. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I believe I've seen it. <laughs> I know we have four. Um, I can certainly look and report but back to you. Just where did we have four? Do you? Um, it, certainly, there's some fours on DW Highway, okay. yeah, Amherst Street. Um, I I can't remember fives, but certainly there are um, <coughs> definitely fours on both of those streets. Okay, so would six inch wide letters, if someone wanted to do like four numbers through another four numbers, you know, if they wanted to write like. 2108 through 21118. Yep. You're looking at nine characters plus some space. So let's say that would be that would be 5 feet. Right. Wide. And so if they're 8 inches like you said if so we're rounding we, that would be 5 square feet five 1 by 5. 5 feet. Yeah, so I'm just wondering in those situations do we want to bring it down because I could see on Daniel Webster Highway and Amherst Street where people might want to do that, especially where some of the plazas go back in and you would have no idea. Sometimes if signs haven't been updated on the street, mm -hmm. you're just going with the number. Yeah. So I'm wondering if we reduce it to we five. Certainly that would allow a four digit dash four digit. Um, the other option would be for them to do a four inch 
number. Mm -hmm. Um, so then they get twice as, <laughs> twice yeah. as space. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, it wouldn't be something that we would want to send anybody for a variance for. This isn't something that's meant to delay a process or add right. an extra step. If you're coming in for a sign anyways and you're going through the process, that's what we're looking for. And they could always go smaller. They can go to a minimum of four inches. Right. You can't have right. little one-inch letters that nobody's going to see from see. anywhere, right. defeating well, and, our purpose. And I think my thought on Daniel Webster Highway and, and Amherst Street um, – is that to um, Alderman Law's point is if the sign's on the west side of the road and you're traveling north on the east side of the road, I would want numbers if it were my business that were large enough so someone on the opposite side of the road could look across and see them. Yes. So that would be my, my only concern. Um, other comments? Um, you've heard the amendment. Um, I have a question. Yes, Alderman Laws. If we don't pass the amendment to the amendment, does the amendment die? Yes. Or if you have another thought, you could ask Alderman Jetty to change his amendment. So if, if we don't support Alderman Jetty's amendment, then this amendment... Stays. It stays. This one, yes. His amendment dies, and what we have before us stays. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Okay, so um, the amendment is not to exceed two square feet um, for the um, letters and numbers for the address. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. No. Nay. Okay, so that amendment fails. So could I, could I make another sure. attempt? <laughs> could, could I go for five? Would you give me five? <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to say three. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I respond to that? Yes, Alderman I, Laws. I, I don't want to make this more complicated than it needs to be. Um, I would be willing to concede if you put in a stipulation, if you're using four inch letters, you can only have a maximum of five square feet. And if you're using eight inch letters, you can have a maximum of 10 square feet. And I guess the problem there is what happens if you use five inch letters, you know? So. I take it back. I would not be in favor of that. Now that I now that I say it out loud, not a good idea. I I think I'll just keep rambling. I think ten square feet is not as much room as we're imagining it to be. And if you write out, if you have a bracket of, of four numbers dash four numbers, so we'll call that ten spaces right there. Continental Boulevard. You're at thirty right now. I mean, that's really not leaving much room for anything else. And if you if you wanted to write out the numbers, then, and I feel like people should have the option to do that if they so choose. Alderman Jetty. So, uh, Director Marshawn, if you, if you look at the wall behind Alderman Laws there and you look at those, uh, those photos of former mayors, mm -hmm. is uh, 10 square feet, would that be approximately the... The area covered by the, you know, the those six photos that we're looking at, the, you know, three across, three on the top, three on the bottom. That general area is that approximately ten square feet? Three on the top, three on the bottom. Oh, you're doing the math differently than I was calculating yeah, I was it in my head. I was doing it um, just the six, one row. I think, uh, maybe a little less. I'm not great at distances. Yeah, that'd sorry. Be <laughs> The six That'd be the too top. long if they're it five. was, um, yeah. Because those pictures are more than a foot yeah. tall. They're tall. closer to two feet tall would be my guess. They're closer to maybe 18, 18 inches. inches. They're one foot wide. And say there's a one foot space in between them. One, two, three, four, five. So say it's 10 feet across there, then they could only be one foot tall. 
So say the first row, sorry, I'm just trying to visualize like, like it would actually be on the sign, right? right? If you're only allowed one row of letters, four inches or eight inches or whatever, um, it's the bottom row of those. And instead of it being an 18 inch, as I'm guessing, it would be just a foot tall. It could be that length. Um, and picture that on 150, you can have up to 150 square feet of signage on DW Highway in Amherst Street. And so you're picturing those, an alphanumeric sequence up 20 feet in the air, 30 feet in the air on the side of the, high, of the road um, when I'm in my car driving. <laughs> Pretty far back, too. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're describing the uh, one row of those five photos across is approximately 10 square feet? Yeah, if they're not as tall, if it's half the half of it or two thirds of the photo. Open them up. And just as a visual aid, this is 11 and a half inches tall by eight inches wide, right? Is that yep. pretty yeah. that's standard? Yeah. So. Imagine 10 of these in a row plus two more, and that's exactly how long the sign can be and almost exactly as high, which isn't that long. Yeah, and, and that's in addition to the maximum sign that's permitted in that zone, which would be uh, in one zone, it's... Um, 10 square feet? That's the residential zone, so you wouldn't have a commercial sign in the residential zone. Okay, so what, what's the? Um, so there's 100, uh, there's um, in the li limited business, um, it's 32, which is um, pretty small. GB, HB are 150 square feet each. PI is 100 square feet. GI is 75 square feet. In the downtown, it's 50 square feet. Um, and what I will just point out again is usually people put this put these numbers on an existing space between, say, if it's a multi-business or several different things in there, they put these numbers in between. They don't want to build them on top or in addition to because that costs a lot more than putting letters on a space that's within the existing frame. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting a fish. I'm going to visual aid this. <laughs> I will bring a visual aid next time. <laughs> if I could just make a comment, yeah. Madam Chair. Where I mean, we're, we're, the problem we're trying to correct here is that people aren't putting numbers on the signs as it is. So to think that people are now going to put excessively big numbers on the sign, uh, I'm not sure is something we need to be concerned about. Yeah. Well, and and I, you know, I think to that point, I think everyone wants. If you're putting numbers up, you want to make sure they are going to be seen. Right. So, so there's um, about what we're looking at. Yeah. That's about. That's probably more than ten square feet. Mm -hmm. So pretty darn close. Yeah. yeah. A little less. Right. Eight and a half. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Pretty, yeah. A little bit more. Yep. So All the Minchetti. If, if I could, uh, am, am I not correct, uh, Director Marshawn? The uh, the ordinance says address numbers must be displayed on each face of the ground or identification sign so as to be visible from the nearest right of way with Arabic numerals or alphabet letters. We're talking about address numbers, right? Correct. Or letters. Okay. So you're envisioning that this would allow people to, you know, instead of it being 128, you're, you're thinking it could be spelled out 128 or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yes. Unlikely, but yes. Any other questions, comments? Okay, 
So um, the motion by Alderman Tenza was to recommend final passage of 019038. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, Aye. I'm Aye. sorry. Aye. Point of order. I'm sorry. Just ask a question. So Alderman Jetty originally um, asked for the amendment that we have in, in, in front of us here, mm -hmm. which capped the letters at 8 inches and um, asked that the total square footage not exceed 10, ten square feet was the right. original. The motion we voted on was for to to was for the two was to amend this to, to the two. two square feet. So and, are, are we voting on now on for, right the amendment for two square feet failed. Okay. So now we are back to voting on what you have received at your desk. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, but I made a uh, motion yes. to uh, change it to five. Oh, I'm so, I thought you were just thinking about that. I'm sorry, Alderman Chetty. I thought it was like, let's make a deal. <laughs> My apology. <laughs> My apologies. I was hoping to get more support, but. <laughs> okay, so H and D not to exceed five rather than 10 square feet. Okay, so um, that is the amendment by Alderman Jetty. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. And that amendment fails. So we are back to what we received this evening. Um, and the motion by Alderman Tenza was for final passage um, for the signs to have Arabic numerals or alphabetic letters, a minimum of four inches in height to a maximum of eight in height, and total square footage not to exceed 10 square feet. And the address identifier is not considered as part of the total allowable sign area calculation. Madam Chair? Yes. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to be overly technical about this, but I, I think the motion that Alderman Tenza made was to, uh, for final passage of the original ordinance, that was approved by the planning board, n not this amendment. So I'm sorry. We you would are have correct. To... You are correct. Um. You are correct. So. Alderman Tenza, or anyone else, would you like to make a motion to amend the original ordinance using this suggested language? I'll make that motion. Okay. Alderman Jetty. Um, to amend using the 10 square feet. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that motion carries. Well, it feels good to be on the winning side. <laughs> I, as, I was, as I was writing this, I was just thinking, what will these look like? <laughs> Truly, like, let's make a deal. Um, so we now have um, the amended motion before us. Do I have um, a motion to recommend final passage as, oh, Director Marchant. I believe that second public hearing is in order, and so right. it might be good to table it until then so you don't have yes. to take it back. Yes, a motion to table. So moved. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, can I say something? Sure. Can I, ask, can I ask a question and then say something? Yes. You could say something. 150 yeah. square feet is the maximum allowed for a sign? Yeah. So you have to imagine, and I'm just hoping this makes you feel a little bit better about Alderman Jetty, the actual sign can be 15 times bigger than this, yeah. right? So on a sign 15 times larger than what's laid out on the floor here, it, I don't think it's really going to be noticeable. Right? Does that make you feel a little bit better? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to be diplomatic here. Okay, so... Um, 
038 has been tabled and um, another public hearing will be scheduled. Mm -hmm. So we will then see this once again. Um, any other comments, discussion, remarks? Okay. Um, any public comment? Okay. Um, no need for non public session. Do I have a motion? Alderman Laws. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, motion to adjourn. Okay, the motion is to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we are adjourned at 817. Thank you.